Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar entitled The Dark Web, Managing Cyber Risks and Preventing Incidents. Tom Garcia is the President and CEO of InfoSight, Inc. Tom has more than 25 years of experience in information security. Well, thank you for the warm introduction, Renee, and welcome, everyone. We're going to go ahead and uh, get started uh, right away with the uh, presentation. It's uh, quite a bit of information, and some of it is, is somewhat technical. Uh, I have a feeling that as we get uh, into some of the subsequent slides, we may have to pick up the pace just a little bit, but hopefully not. And um, we'll go ahead and just talk for a brief moment uh, about what we're going to cover today. So we're going to talk about the deep web as it's uh, known today and the difference between what is the deep web and what is the dark web. There's been a little bit of uh, confusion regarding that uh, topic in the past, and we want to clarify that for everyone. We're going to talk about uh, a TOR, or the Onion Network, and uh, how encrypted messages are sent. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, some of the cyber criminals and their use of the dark web, the risk associated with the dark web, and then a little bit about how to protect ourselves from this cyber crime that's uh, continuing to... Uh, uh, grow exponentially, you know, in this underground world. So the first question that we really want to ask ourselves is, you know, what is the deep web? And the deep web, you know, the best way to, to really uh, demonstrate this is really with this, this iceberg um, uh, graphic here, if you will. Um, when you take a look at the, um, the uh, deep web, it, it's really known as the surface web. Right, so it's, it's lots of content that, uh, you know, is mostly open. Some of it might be behind, you know, paywalls, but most of it is visible, and it can be searched with a Google or a Bing or any other browser for that matter. But as you see by the graphic, it's just very the very tip of the iceberg because it's what the search engines are able to index and find when you go out there and use one of those tools. But the vast majority of the content on the web is well below the surface. So this is what you might call the dark web, or excuse me, the deep web, or the invisible web. So it really is not uh, information that can be indexed uh, from a standard type of browser. It's often behind logins. A lot of times it's database driven, which makes it more difficult, if not impossible, for the search engines to be able to index. So it really presents quite a bit of a, a big challenge when it comes to uh, really trying to have access to some of that. So there are many deep websites that aren't indexed because they're using those dynamic databases, and they're really devoid of any kind of hyperlinks. Um, so whenever you, you, you know, perform some type of search, you're never going to find them. And it's really impossible to measure. You see this graphic. I thought it somewhat comical. It says in 2001. I said, well, geez, we're in 2016, 2017. But that was one of the last estimations of how deep the, uh, or how large the deep web is in, in relative to the surface web. Uh, most people don't even take a guess at it anymore because it's grown so fast underneath. So, you know, when you take a look at the, um, the deep web, you, you know, you're looking for things that um, are com more complex questions, something that a search engine may not be able to, uh, to find very easily. And you use a different tool. You don't use a web browser to find it. So if you want to know who's selling my products or services fraudulently online in the underground, that's more of something that you would look to the deep web or even the dark web later to find. Um, you know, more complex questions, not the easy things that are going to be indexed and found out there like shopping sites and uh, different types of news sites, etc. And we like to say that the deep web is really hidden in plain view. So it refers to any web page that's been concealed in plain sight or re resides within a separate but public layer of the Internet. So. The Internet's built around web pages that reference other web pages. So if you have a destination page that doesn't have any inbound links, you've basically concealed that page and it can't be found by other uh, web pages. So, or search engines for that matter. So one example of this would be a blog post that hasn't been published yet. So the blog post may exist on the public Internet, but unless you know the exact URL, you're never going to be able to, to uh, find that blog post. And there are other examples of the deep web and deep content um, on the web as well, uh, different techniques to be able to get it. There are search boxes, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, there are subdomain names, and you'll find like something.yourdomainname.com. Uh, unless you know where that content is or it's being linked to from another link, it's virtually unsearchable 
again, unless you know exactly what it is. There are different types of special headers that use different versions of web page. There are items you can only access through virtual private networks or VPNs, and also private social media posts as well. And then you'll even find some web pages that have a nofollow search tag. So when you, when you want to find this information, and I'm not by any means saying you need to go looking for, for deep web content, you have to know how to go after it. So you use something which we call uh, is no, or is known as a harvest engine. And um, it has a lot of analytic capabilities and versioning of web pages that a regular web browser isn't going to have. Um, it gathers the actual raw text from the web pages as opposed to just storing uh, or searching metadata on the top, um, you know, keywords that are out there. So there's a lot of uh, deep web, uh, you know, silo data sets out there that have customized drill downs. Uh, some of it is, is perfectly legitimate content. Um, and there are examples of that if you search different databases, official records, things like that. They're not indexable because they're behind a database, but yet it, it is public information. So really, it's one of these harvesters that you would use in order to be able to go after that data set to gain that information, whether you do it knowingly or not.